You don't have to put a bomb to yourself and go somewhere. You don't have to be starving and let a cow walk by. You don't want to eat it because it might be Uncle Billy. Okay, see, they do believe what they believe. And Christians want to question everything on what they believe. So if you don't believe anymore, or you don't, you're not really sure anymore, it's only a matter of time before you don't believe at all, and then you will believe one day, if it's in our lifespan, that the church is caught away, and here you are in the midst of everybody else here staying back. You'll believe then. Okay? You'll believe then. Are you listening to me? So I think it's really interesting that we need to put a time frame. Like I said, you know, uh, God didn't put us here just to, to build our faith to get things for ourselves. He put us here to do things for him. Amen? <clears throat> Where did we leave off on? What, uh, what verse was that there? 48, thank you. All right, go over to Luke in chapter, uh, chapter 10. If you're there, say amen. amen. Okay, Luke in chapter 10. And it says here in Luke chapter 10, verse 32, a certain Sumerian who was on a journey came upon him and when he, uh, when he saw him, he felt compassion. Verse 34, and came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put him on his own, uh, own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Verse 35, watch this now. And on the next day, he took out two denarii and he gave them to the innkeeper. And he said, take care of him and whatever more money you spend, any more you will spend, I, when I return, I'll repay you. So a denarii at that time was a day's wages. Now remember, a day is a thousand years with the Lord. Look at verse 35. And the next day, this is in the NIV, he took out two silver coins and he gave them to the innkeeper. And he says, look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any expense that you may have. Okay. We're looking at the same thing. You could read all this whole, all the chapters and get a whole whole of it. We're looking at the same thing, though, talking about here, I'm, I'm going to take care of the first two days. So in other words, when I see, because there's four or five scriptures that do this, what I see is God never planned on coming back the first thousand years, the second thousand years. But anywhere right now, it's a good sign. Even if you don't know the Bible, you really don't know what's going on. Okay? All you do is look at everything and you think the world's going to come to the end. You have people predicting online. The economy's crashing, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened. Well, if that's where your wealth is, you're in trouble, okay? And you're going to be full of fear. My wealth is not there, so it don't really matter, okay? don't really matter to me. What happens, you know? Uh, my trust is in the Lord, you know? And that's where every Christian's trust should be. Not in your pension fund, not in anything else, because everything could disappear. Just think of it this way. God forbid. Say God forbid. Right, it's not a curse. God forbid. It's in the Bible. God forbid tomorrow you wake up and you can't get out of bed anymore. God forbid you can't get out of bed. They come and get you, bring you over. They do a bunch of tests and they say you've got eight hours to live. All the things you thought were important doesn't even matter anymore. Don't even matter anyway. You have to think like that, okay? In other words, not think like that that you're going to get up tomorrow and get that report, but think like that, that everything that you thought was so important, if you got that told to you, none of those things would be important anymore. The only thing that would be important to you is how do you stand with the Lord, you know? Now, you know, a lot of our mindsets, because of the way we're brought up and everything, well, you know what I'd do? I'd get right with the Lord those last eight hours. There's no guarantee that you will know when your last breath is. Yes, I believe for 80, 90, 100 years, okay? Uh, I believe it. Are you listening to me? Don't mean I'm going to get it, but I believe it. What do you mean? I believe I'm entitled to it. If I find it in the Word of God, I'm entitled to it. Doesn't mean I'm going to get it. So if I believe and I confess every day that I'm going to live to be 90 years old, 
I'm going to be live long and I'm going to live strong. It's in Psalms. It has to happen. And meanwhile, I'm polluting my body, spraying cars with no mask on my face, whatever it might be. Then I'm just a fool is what I am. I'm a fool. Okay? And we got a lot of foolishness going on. You know, just because you confess something doesn't mean it's going to happen unless you line up with your confession. So when I start speaking good things and not bad things over my house, anything that could happen bad, I'm going to start to see it before it happens, and I'll have an opportunity to stop it or to fix it. And that's how you have to look at your life. Are you understanding? So it does matter what you confess and what you say. You know, get up in the morning and say, the hell with this, hon. Let's just get a divorce. Wonderful. You just planted a seed of divorce. If you're smart, you rip it up out of the ground. Otherwise, it will be working on you. Will be working on you. <clears throat> so the same facts go here. We're in a time where we better watch what we're doing. You know? And, you know, we get so caught up in life, we forget about it. Are we going to be right? Or do we have the theology that it don't matter? We'll get a moment and we'll see and we'll go, oh, yeah, praise the Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Or, are you listening to me? You know, so we, we have to really bring it to the forefront of our mind. See, I don't know how many of you ever know. I was on the point of dying. Okay. I was on the point. I, I seen what happens when your body is messed up. I remember every moment of them wheeling me, picking me out of the street, choking on my blood, ripping my clothes off in the ambulance. I remember the gurney trip up the, up the elevator. I remember looking at the wall, and there was my blood coming out of me, splattered all over. I remember everything. I remember them putting tubes down my nose. I remember it all. Okay, So I have an idea of what takes place. And only by the grace of God and my mother's prayers am I here. She sat out in that hallway and prayed and prayed and prayed. And you know what? As much religion of man they had, they were clean before God and God heard them. Are you listening to me? You know. So I, have, I, have a, I had a look at the other side. I have an idea. And then it's, it's all gone. Everything you thought was important is all gone from your mind. It doesn't mean anything. The only thing that means anything is, are you going to stand before the Lord or are you going to the pit of hell for the rest of your life? That's the only thing that matters. The only thing at all. And we have signs in the Bible, you know? And as much as we want to be prosperous, we want to have a good time serving the Lord, we better learn to understand that we need to walk right every day. And when I mean walk right, in your heart, you know if you're right with the Lord, you know. And I'm not talking about whether you're born again or not. I know, I think these are all born again, okay, you know. But are you, are you doing what's right? Or are you becoming so callous and so hard that you could be a rotten person and still be born again and show up at church, say, praise the Lord, I have a covenant with God? Because it could happen, you know. It could happen. We could get so callous, so hard, that we're not convicted anymore, and we think it's okay. You know, so I, I, I hope this is a wake-up call for us. You know, wake-up call that we, uh, we need to understand. Not fear, scared, but confident, okay? Confident that we're doing the best we know how to do, okay? And our mind is not on just getting stuff. You know, if I get this, wow, God must really love me. He said, no, faith works things. Okay? Faith works things. Your trust in God works things. So in other words, you go to your, it's hard to use because we got a lot of broken families, but you go to your daddy, okay, and you trust him for something. He gets it for you. It don't matter whether you have a sixth grade education or four years of college. You didn't get it because of your education. You got it because of your relationship. You understand? And that's where we get our things from, relationship. Just like that man I mentioned to you. Use, you know, God working miracles through him. Uh, 
working for the Lord all of those years and not having nothing when the time came. I was told stories by this years ago by uh, 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 Pastor List on the field, you know, how missionaries would go out to the field, put 40, 50 years in on the missionary field and come home and they didn't even have nothing. No house, no nothing, no place to live, nothing. Okay? You know, how could God do that to them? God didn't do it to them. They did it to them. Are you listening to me? You know, they did it to them. Are you, are you listening? Okay. <clears throat> uh, look at uh, uh, Luke 13. Luke chapter 13. Now watch this one here. Luke 13. If you dare say amen. All right. Look at, verse, uh, look at verse 31. Just at that time, some Pharisees came up saying to him, Go away and depart from here. For Herod wants to kill you. And he said uh, to them, Go and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons, and I perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I will reach my goal. What do you think of that? On the third day I'll reach my goal. So, you know, God didn't leave us blind. Not only are we supposed to recognize the times by what's going on around us, if we're not too involved in our own life. Otherwise, people don't even know. You know, you, do you realize that the more you know about things, the more you're aware of what's going around you? Okay. Uh, I remember back when I really turned over my life to the Lord, came to West Virginia, you know, and I really made Jesus not my Savior, but my Lord, and I began to change things and grow and get out of a lot of things that I didn't know was sin. And then I would go back east and visit my family, and I would be, I would be devastated. Devastated. What I used to hear spoken, what I used to see, and I'd go in the bathroom and I'd turn the fan on. i said, oh, God, save my family. You know? And God spoke to me one day. He says, they've always been like that. You were like that too. You just didn't know it. <laughs> like, you know, I got this whole thing like, oh God, my whole family are all going to go to hell. You know, and what happened? The blinders were taken off me. Okay. And then I had to learn to trust God. You know, he said, the avenue of that is stand in for your family. Serve me. It'll flow down to all those with you. Okay. But I, I mean, I was devastated the first time, but it was always there but I've never seen it before. And that's what takes place with us in the Word. If you're walking in the Word, you will see things around, okay? But we got a big God. He's not leaving us nor forsaking us. He's not leaving our country. He's not abandoning us. Thanks for listening today to Seeds of Knowledge. We would like to hear from you. Write us at TKM PO Box 46, Mannington, West Virginia, 26582. That's TKM. P.O. Box 46, Mannington, spelled M-A-N-N-I-N-G-T-O-N, West Virginia, abbreviated W-V-26582. You can email us at tkm at westco.net. Westco is spelled W-E-S-T-C-O. Be sure to visit our website at www.tkmi.org or you can hear this broadcast again or a wide selection of other teachings by Pastor Nick. Until our next broadcast, may God bless you and meet your every need.